G'day Taos, and we have your news for today, Wednesday, July 31st, 2013. But first, before we get started, we, we have, have a disclaimer. Okay. First off, we just want to let you know that the things that our opinions and ideas are not those of Channel 22, Town of Taos, UNM Taos, or really anybody else other than ourselves. Yes. Okay, so. now onto the news. Hey, so Roberto, did you hear that uh, for males, it, it, as far as monog as far as apes, monogamy? <laughs> okay, male apes. Sorry. Male apes uh, have an evolutionary benefits when when they have monogamous relationships. Really? So, like what kind of benefits? Well, you uh, there there are two competing uh, researchers, and one of them said the primary uh, benefit was that. Uh, a male can look after his, his children and have a child every year and, and ultimately instead of spreading himself around if he stays with one woman he has more living offspring. The other uh, researcher said that uh, having a, a single partner allows the, the, the male ape to defend the life of his children and will keep the, the mother from ignoring uh, the, uh, um, those, those children. So. Now, you, anywhere in these studies, do they uh, suggest that this might carry over onto the uh, troglodyte homunculi? What? The human. Human? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the knuckle draggers. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, I wouldn't assume anything. <laughs> but I also, uh, speaking of, of wildlife sorts of things, uh, did you hear that Vladimir Putin uh, has some photos that there's some suspicion? He, he is shown out there in the wild with this giant fish. And he claims that it's so huge, and actually, people are not buying his his. So he, Putin has a fish story. Putin is telling fish stories. So yeah. he's saying that he caught a fish, he found a fish that's this big, but it's really this big. Yeah, yeah, it's about it's about that big. And, oh really? And, and you know, whatever. Who cares? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's what's up with the weather for you? Oh, what's well, up with the news for you? well, you know, speaking of Russia, you know, Snowden's back in the news. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about how he, um, you know, filed for immigration, and the FMS, the uh, Russia Federal Migration Service, this could take up to three months, uh, but he can expect invasive medical tests, a placement in a refugee center, and around clock security observation. Or just a few things that he could expect with this um, transition. Jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> Jackpot. Well, anyway, Snowden has publicly announced that he's going to learn Russian. <laughs> and a uh, um, matter of fact, he is living right now in a, well, he's living at the airport. But the only refugee camp that is in proximity of Moscow is actually a thousand miles away from Moscow. So he's actually going to be probably shipped off there. And uh, I don't think he'll be doing any leaking anytime soon. Um, yeah, yeah. He'll probably have a very mundane little job there in, in a thousand miles from Moscow. Yeah. Um, he does have to pay a fee of $150 for you know the immigration service but i'm sure he could float that or the state's gonna cover He's, that yeah he has friends he'll, he has he'll friends. get it through paypal easy so would you yeah. become a russian if you had to go through medical tests uh <laughs> and what kind of medical tests do you think these are i uh, look like you're gonna draw a little blood and have him turn and cough but that's about it you think so okay i think so <laughs> uh what about the round clock observation by security They'll get tired of him after a month, and he'll be fine. He'll be yeah, fine. He could just, you know, cruise around come Chaka or something. Yeah, unless he's having big parties, then other people will want to join. So, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of hackers and uh, whistleblowers, uh, Bradley Manning's back in the news, and I guess, you know, his verdict is going to come out pretty soon. Um, some people are say, saying he's facing up to 100 years for um, treason. Mm -hmm. um, are you a Bradley Manning fan? It sounds like a football player to me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, anyways, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll 
<laughs> we'll just, keep you up to date and see if you yeah, know yeah. how much what's the verdict going to be there. Okay. So uh, well, in cool. other international news, uh, a mountaineer from New Zealand and his son are feared uh, lost or dead. Uh, they were trying to uh, climb the K2, and so Marty Schmidt and his son Denali um, were attempt were attempting to scale Something. the world's the wow. second large, highest mountain and. Why do people feel the need to summit such peaks? I mean, what do you, would you go and scale Mount Everest? Uh, or K2 for that matter? Yeah, I've hiked to the top, the highest point in, in, in New Mexico, and it's good, you know, it's, 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 it's fine, it's, it's a great then thing. But what's the elevation of that? It's only 12,000, 13,000. Okay, so times that by what, two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, I mean, it's... Yeah. Well, my thing is, is why did he, the guy named his son Denali, so, oh, anyway, whatever. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I was going to talk about the Pope, but I don't want to talk about the Pope. Yeah, let's uh, not talk about the Pope. This is the most shocking thing to me today, is the, as an Arkansas school district is to arm 20 staff with concealed weapons. How do you feel about uh, concealed weapons? I think in, it's a good idea. School, in, 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 really? Yeah. <laughs> Because? Because uh, the student populace is bringing firearms, and why can't the teachers arm themselves? No, 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 it's a bad, it's a bad. I don't, well, you know, it depends. I think that the teacher needs to go through some kind of psych evaluation, you know, <laughs> and some kind of training, because I know that there's a lot of teachers who just go off the handle and just start busting the cap at the students, but, you know. I, I, I really do believe that, uh, in a way, <clears throat> when you have a student populace that's so amped up with such video games and movies and stuff like that, and we already seen the Columbines and the uh, you know the kinetic shootings and stuff like that. That uh, I think it would be actually favorable for a an adult to be armed with a concealed weapon in case if one of these people actually infiltrate the school with a firearm and start capping fellow students or blasting fellow students, and that could you know basically. Instead of having 20 deaths, we would have you know, one death. So the more guns in schools, the safer kids are. Yeah, I, 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 I buy that. <laughs> okay. And, and, your, and yourself, I mean, what do you think? I mean, uh, I think, I think it, you know, there is the safety issue where I think, you know, guns, are, even if you intend to use them properly, you're not, they're not always used properly. Mm -hmm. There are mistakes made. And, uh, you know, statistically, I think, I, I, I'm not a statistician, but, and I haven't researched this, but there, I've heard that when there's a gun around, people tend to get shot. And if there's no gun around, people tend not to get shot. But does crime reduce when the public is more armed, or does it increase? I mean, well, in Canada and in, and, and in the UK, there aren't public guns, and no one dies of gunshots. Because well, there's no guns. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But in this country, we all have guns. I mean, kids have access to guns. My only concern, really, with teachers and concealed firearms is that why don't the children find the, the concealed firearm? Yeah, and so that brings in a whole other sort of uh, regulation and, and processes for teachers to have. They'll have to get background checks for weapons. They'll have to Psych maybe the, maybe maybe the, the school district will be in charge of buying special guns that are fingerprint or, or only linked to particular authorized uh, like a, maybe some kind of biometric measurement you know that will measure the finger and they will allow the trigger yeah because other, otherwise the um, you know otherwise the your teacher has to wear it on them at all times this is true and with a lock and a whatever uh, they, they can't put them in the desk you know it's so how do the teachers feel about this are they pro uh, arming themselves? I'm sure there are a few. I'm, there, there are plenty of, of, of diminutive teachers out there who, who would feel more comfortable in front of their classroom with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is America, and we are a gun culture. Do you own a firearm? Uh, I do not own a firearm. I have fired them before as a little kid, and uh, the shock and distress of, of, of shooting one of those and imagining uh, a bloody mess at the other end of it is yeah. distressing. <laughs> so, okay. Anything else going on in the news today? Anything else going on in the news? Um, well, speaking of, <laughs> no, no, um, I was going to talk about uh, Nazi war criminals. But yes, let's talk about war, Nazi war criminals. <laughs> hey, there happens to be several in, 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 in America. Really? So, Chicago? 
Uh, there are at least 10 people who are su suspected of Nazi war crimes in the US. So let's get online and find out who they are. Do we have names? No, we don't have names. Oh, OK. But there are 10 running around in this country. Yeah, yeah. There's probably more than 10. Well, why don't we go ahead and find out what the weather might be like for those 10 Nazi war criminals. OK. OK, they might have, you know, we, they might have a rainy day. They might have a good day. Let's find out. All right, okay? I'm off to the weather. OK. Thanks, Enrico. And good day, Taos. I have your weather for today, Wednesday, July 31st, 2013. In the morning, we're going to have sunshine with isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon with a high of 88 degrees and a low of 56 degrees. 30% chance of rain, 29% humidity, 11 on the UV index. We have sunrise at 608, moonset at 325, and we are in the waning crescent of the moon phase. On to events with Enrico. Hey, thanks, Robert. And now some events for today. First off, the Red Willow Farmer's Market is opening at 10 a.m., so go on down and, and buy some produce. It's great stuff over there. Also, there's a benefit. Roots and Wings Benefit Show is happening over at the Taos Mesa Brewing uh, from 7 o'clock to 11 p.m. I know you'll love Don Canacenti, and there's the Shrugs and the Muddy Mountain Orchestra Trio. So go on by, check them out, enjoy the space over there. It's a good cause, and uh, yeah, uh, it's great. Also, there will be the Somos Summer Writing Series this evening. Uh, Natalie Goldberg, the author of Writing Down the Bones, will be reading from her work. Also, Mirabai Starr, the author of The God of Love, will be reading too. And she's a great author and wonderful to speak with. So that's at 7.30 at the Harwood Museum. Tickets are $8. So go on out, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.